right? I got several more projects I'm going to work on, and I figured why not film it? So I, uh, you've seen me where I created this new piece of glass out of a bunch of scraps. Same with this one in the middle. Uh, I have other scrap pieces here. These are all just single layer that you see laying here. They're just single layers of glass. Uh, these two are rolled edges. I just like to try to hang on to this stuff and use it as much as I can. And so I have no shortage of uh, amazing Murini and uh, other vitrograph and cool things, as you know, from all sorts of suppliers, including, um, and even water jets. So I've got, you know, SS Glass Art and Tabitha and Lori, and I'll post all the links, of course. But I am going to build a whole bunch of little floral pieces, and some of them I'm going to do a little differently than I usually do, and I just thought I would film all of these and show you how I use up my scraps, how I make little pieces. These sell well for me, too. Um, and so I'm just going to have some fun and show you kind of uh, project by project. So stay tuned. I don't know how long this video is going to get, uh, but stay tuned and I'll show you what I'm working on. All right. So for this uh, piece, I decided to use, I have some of these amazing strawberries from Tabitha and uh, also some giant leaves from Tabitha. And I did a search to see kind of what do strawberry plants look like, just so I could try to model that a little bit. I'm gonna use some vitrograph to create the vines. And I even have, these are from Lori Moreno, um, a couple of flowers that resemble pretty closely to strawberry flowers. And then also from Tabitha, I have these cute little caterpillars. So uh, I am going to build out uh, this piece to look like a little bit of a strawberry patch. All right, there we go. Just a little bit of vitrograph to give it some uh, movement. I love all of these pieces. My little caterpillar's kind of hiding in there. I like to put stuff in there that's a little bit of um, hide and seek. Uh, I added a ladybug from Lori Moreno because I love adding ladybugs to these pieces for good luck. So this is gonna go in on one of my favorite schedules for this kind of stuff. I don't go very high. Uh, you can find that schedule in the video notes down below underneath the video. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out, as I always do. All right, for this little piece, I just like to make little floral scenes and I have um, some different pieces, little flowers or little, um, uh, maybe it's curious uh, cutoffs from Tabitha that kind of look like little drop petals. So I'm just going to play around with doing a couple of things on here and see what it, see what it looks like. All right, I think that's enough tinkering for now. So um, I took the vitrograph, you can see how I use that, uh, another little piece here, some leaves on there. I had a lot of these little purple flowers. They have their hollows, they have a couple hollow spots in them, but I don't care, I think they look kind of cool. Uh, and that's the way to pick up a lot of stuff inexpensive, guys. These came from Tabitha, uh, you know, she marks, marks them on a deep discount. You can still use them and they're really cool. I don't think Tabitha stuff is expensive to begin with, but this is a great way to, um, you know, to pick up some uh, fun little pieces of art that you can incorporate into something and uh, not, you know, not spend a ton of money. You saw the green frit here. I'm fiddling with this one. You saw the green fit here that I put down in the bottom. Uh, what I did was I have a, a bunch of coarse green, like every color. <laughs> There's um, probably some sort of leafy green in here. There's aventurine. There's uh, spring green. There's some streaky stuff. And I take coarse frit and just mix it into, you know, equal parts and uh, create my own frit blend. And that's what you see, uh, not really, in this bottle here. I put that in a little cup 
and I added a little glue to it, and that just helps it from rolling all over the place. And um, then finally, these elements here on the top, these were from Nancy Sala. She's not making these anymore. They're flame worked, and I just thought that they would be pretty as a as a flower. I've been holding onto those forever, and so I'm glad to find a good use for them this time. Ladybug for good luck. Let's see what it looks like when it comes out. All right, I'm just playing around here. So I just have a tiny little scrap of glass, and uh, I might mount it on a frame or something. Um, I might even just put a large magnet on the back and make it a little fridge piece of art. I have some uh, vitrograph here that's a venturine. I cannot get enough of a venturine green. And so I have a water jet from Henry at SS Glass Art. I thought that would be kind of fun to do a little bit of, uh, uh, well, now that I think about this, sunflowers are kind of straight up. They don't curve like this. Let me see if I can find a different piece of vitrograph. Okay, yeah, I found this guy. I like this a little bit better. So I'm gonna move my sunflower up here and my vitrograph will sit there. And I've got some leaves that are uh, these. This is a mixed thing of leaves, but I've, I've gotten so many from folks now, uh, from Tabitha and from Lori, that I can kind of recognize their work. And uh, so I'll pull out, uh, let's do this one. These two are from Tabitha. And so a little bit of that. Tabitha also had these sunflowers. And uh, so I think I want to just kind of play around. I recognize this sunflower doesn't match this one, but this is not a concern of mine necessarily. I think I like that. I was trying to think, do I put something else over here? And I don't really want to. So now I'm just going to center this up a little bit more. Sometimes I like the rule of thirds when doing design and kind of only designing on a third of the piece or something, but in this case, I don't know, I just want to go for something that matches. So, a little fiddly here as I mess around with this. I haven't glued any of this down. I'll use a little hairspray or some glass tack uh, to secure this so that it doesn't move around on me. And, uh, that's it. I think I'm going to keep it quite, you know, just this simple. Although, um, I do have lots of these little caterpillars. I wonder if I could pick a teeny tiny one. Oh yeah, he's kind of fun. If I put him on one of the flowers. I like that. Let's do that. Okay, uh, I'm going to glue this down and fire it in the kiln. All right, now for this one, this is a long piece of glass. This is uh, almost 12 inches long and it's real short. It's only uh, two and a half or so inches tall. Um, so I thought it would be cool just to uh, drape this over a lamp bender mold and make a floral scene out of this as well. So I have, uh, again, I'm gonna put down this frit that I have kind of across the bottom. And I just have lots of flowers. Uh, again, pretty, pretty blessed, pretty lucky that I've got lots of things uh, like flowers and leaves and ladybugs and such from Lori Moreno or from Tabitha. These are all from Lori. Uh, this is uh, some bigger ones that have already been pre-fused. So they're like little dots. Um, and then I have a bunch of them that I've already smashed in kiln firings, pure ire. So I'm just going to put green down as kind of my base, and I'm just gonna load this thing up with flowers and have fun with it. All right, I realized I didn't start my time lapse, uh, so I, you didn't get to see me start from the very beginning on this, but I just filled this sucker up and then I put some uh, frit down. This is fuchsia, which I think will fill in that a little bit nicely and just all sorts of flowers and stuff. I'm gonna glue this down with a little bit of hairspray and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so for piece number two, I've decided I love that so much, I'm just gonna do it again. <laughs> uh, I may put a little bit more of the green up in the, in the top here to make it look a little bit more like a field, but I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing.
All right, here it is. I built this one just a little bit different, and uh, now I'm just putting some glass tack down. Try to keep, sometimes I use glass tack, sometimes I use hairspray. I guess probably hairspray would work just as well, but I'm just putting a little bit of that down to kind of keep everything in place while it dries, and I need to move it out of my way. All right, now for this piece, this is the one where I used a whole bunch of scrap glass in the background. I used a bunch of broken up confetti from Tabitha to kind of create some grassy area, full fused it, and uh, now I'm gonna use it as a blank to create something else. So I've got a number of water jets. These are all sunflowers. These are transparent that'll strike uh, from Henry at uh, SS Glass Art. I've got some uh, tulips here from Henry. What I'm gonna do with these though, and I've got this little butterfly that's dichroic. What I'm gonna do with these tulips, I'm gonna just play a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Henry, I don't know if he still does, but sold some uh, dichroic frit. Uh, he called it pixie dust. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this brush, this medium brush. I've used this in a past video, and I'm going to draw a little bit on these tulips and sprinkle a little bit of this uh, dichro uh, frit on them just to give these a little bit something else. I'll, I may use some, uh, some vitrograph here to create some stems. I'm going to grab some other odds and ends and all sorts of pieces that I got and just build this thing out. All right, now this was also a scrap piece. This was all rolled edges that uh, I put in at a full fuse and got it down into one six millimeter, basically, um, piece of glass. So uh, this one I'm gonna make a self-standing. In fact, I'm gonna do two of these. This is the scrap, and this is just a single sheet of three millimeter uh, with a rolled edge at the top. I'm gonna do both of these the same way. So I want these to be self-standing. I've got a mold that will fold these in half. So I'm not going to put anything on the bottom, uh, call it third, of both of these. I'm going to build my design from there up because that part's going to fold down and be underneath. So uh, I love doing blue bonnets, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and build these out as kind of the traditional blue bonnet pieces that I like to do. And uh, I'll just put it on time lapse and build these while I go. All right, here we go. I filled it up with frit. I tacked some stuff down with hairspray where I needed to. Uh, I have a little frit mix of random colors that I like to sprinkle in the background just to give it a little bit uh, of something else to see and a little dimension and give you a little bit more of a feel of a uh, field of flowers, wild flowers. And uh, there you go. So I'm gonna put these in the kiln with all the other pieces. All right, here's the strawberry piece. And I'm going to just bring this real close, so hopefully it's uh, in focus and not, not out of focus and blurry. But look how amazing that is. Tabitha and team, I mean, what you guys are able to accomplish in glass is just pretty remarkable. Now, <clears throat> I went, uh, you can see <clears throat> the stringer that I laid over did not fully fuse. Let's see, is that, did not fully lay down on the glass, so there's a little bit of a gap there. That's kind of a fragile piece, a little um, risky there. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this, and I've decided that I am probably going to frame it. It's a, you know, because I, I originally thought maybe I would put this on a, some sort of a slump that would make it a self-stander, but it's so small and, uh, and really kind of delicate. I think I may frame it instead. The, the challenge then becomes, this was a scrap piece of glass, so it's an odd size. This is six inches wide, but only three and a half tall, so I can't really put it in a four by six frame. I happen to have a really awkward size frame here that is uh, seven and a half by four and a half. And so I think if I change the background color out and just glue this to the glass itself, that could look pretty cool. So I think that that's my plan for this piece. I'm delighted with how this one turned out. 
Now, on many of these, I did add clear powder to them, and so uh, it just shines it up really nice. Uh, after I filmed this, I decided to go ahead and add a little uh, mushroom to this. Henry at SS Glass Art does some freeze and fuse, and I had some of these mushrooms that I thought were cute. Uh, and so um, I'm, I'm just, I'm really pleased. I think Nancy's pieces look beautiful on here. Uh, this makes a nice little floral piece. Of course, you can't ignore the cuteness of the caterpillar and the ladybug down here. So uh, very pleased with this piece. I don't know exactly how I'm going to display this or, um, you know, what I'm going to do with it next. So uh, we'll see. But generally, that's the piece. And I'm, I'm pleased with the way that turned out. All right, look how cute these little sunflowers are. It just turned out great. And I think, you know, unless you point it out, I mean, the, the, it just looks like a little field of sunflowers. I recognize that this one came from SS Glass Art and these came from Tabitha, but it all just goes together. They look so great and the colors are awesome. A little caterpillar on there is fun. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Uh, as I mentioned before, you could maybe put a large magnet on the back and make it a little piece of fridge art. I even found it, uh, let's see, Ikea this tiny little frame, you know, kind of meant for almost like a school picture size, but you could see kind of mounting it in there, uh, free floating in there could look kind of cool. So I think there's some options. In fact, that might be the direction I go with it. I'm fortunate enough to have an Ikea near me, so I can always go pick up more of these frames, but that would just be a cute little piece to brighten up somebody's day. All right, check these out. They're they're very similar in their approach, so I'm going to show them both together. Uh, again, after I filmed these, I did add uh, a couple of mushrooms uh, to this piece and to the one below because uh, I just think that they go so well with the, the look of this. But love, love, love the texture uh, that I got on both of these. I added clear powder to them just to shine them up and make sure that all of these wafers and elements, you know, came out nice without any vitrification. And I'm pleased with the way all of those look. So the next step on these, I think I'm going to drape these over the lamp bender mold and turn these into kind of freestanding art. So uh, I will show that after I do those. So stay tuned to see what that looks like at the very end. All right, here's this piece. I did have a piece of frit that jumped from one piece and tacked onto this one, so I'm just going to nip that off. But uh, I'm I like this. I think this is cool. And as you remember, this was this base glass was 100% scrap, uh, and also some of Tabitha's confetti. And now I've got a really nice base for something, and I think it really works out well. Remember, these were strikers, so look how bright yellow and beautiful that is. The little added dichro frit. Uh, kind of makes these tulips pop in a different way. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving this one. Uh, what's interesting, and I don't know, I think the video is picking it up. So this white, I think, is relatively prone to devitrification. So I dusted a pretty good layer of clear powder over this whole thing. Um, and the clear powder on the other pieces fused right in. On the white, it almost made this texture. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I'm sure you can see the texture. Um, it's crazy how it did that, and but it's cool. I like it. Um, it it's not as textured on the bottom here. Uh, it's really just on the white, and so I think the white was devitrifying and then grabbed the clear. I don't know exactly. I don't know the mechanics of it, but um, it's not what I expected. I don't dislike it. I'm not sure that I could replicate that if I tried. Here's the other piece that was scrap glass and. Same uh, thing happened here. Really interesting phenomenon. I dust the entire thing with clear powder, and as a result, I got some interesting texture where it was starting to uh, devitrify. You can definitely hear that. Glass doesn't usually sound that way. So that clear powder actually uh, almost enhanced the, uh, the texture that you get. Um, it was all in the same kiln load, all of these pieces, and the clear powder didn't do that on anything else, only on these white pieces uh, that were prone to devitrification. So very interesting. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you don't have that texture on uh, any of the other elements here. This entire thing was covered in clear, and uh, these fired nice, and that clear blended right in. It was only on the white. So this is going to become a self-stander. I'm going to put it on a mold and uh, slump it. So stay tuned to the end of the video to see what that looks like. And then similar Similarly, I'll just grab this one. Same concept. This is going to be, this is a single layer of glass. Really pleased with the way this looks and the way it fired. This will also be a self-stander, so I'm going to put it on that same mold, and you can stay tuned to see how that turns out. All right, I have these pieces ready to go into the kiln. So these two I'm going to slump over the lamp bender mold, and I'll be honest, there's probably a sophisticated way to do this, but I don't know what it is. So I just eyeball it. 
Uh, I just look to see, I try to use the edge, the straight edge here to line it up to see, it, do I have it even? Do I have it equally balanced so that I know it'll be a relatively equal slump on both sides? And so uh, I use the straight edge on this side and the straight edge on this side, and I feel fairly confident about it. There's probably, again, a really good way to do this in a specific formula. Uh, I don't follow that. I just eyeball it. <clears throat> and then on these, I was very lucky. I have this uh, uh, <clears throat> self-standing mold here that... Um, will allow the bottom portion here to fold down. I featured this before in a different video. And uh, both of these just barely fit. They're, they won't touch uh, as they fold down, or they shouldn't anyway. Uh, in this one, I had to stand it up or raise it up off the edge uh, to, and I just used some fiber paper uh, so that it will fold in the spot where I want it to fold. Same here, I want it to fold at the end. And so I had to uh, raise that up and kind of rig it here to work. So I'm going to put all of these in on the same schedule to slump and we'll see what they look like when they come out. All right, we're done. So here is the self-standing piece folded over quite nicely. If you're interested in my firing schedule, I will include that in the video notes as I always do. Uh, I have to admit when I opened the kiln, I had a little bit of a panic attack because that's a stainless steel former and I didn't put any kiln release on it. So I was worried that maybe the glass, usually I put a piece of uh, paper like papyrus down and I totally forgot. And you might have even seen that in the video uh, that I forgot, but uh, neither piece stuck. So boy, did I luck out. So, um, I mean, it was a, a low firing, you know, 1200 degrees, I think. Uh, so a low slump temperature, but I got, I got pretty lucky there. Uh, I'm not sure that I would tempt the fates again next time. Uh, so anyway, here's these two pieces. They both stand quite well. Very excited about those. And you can see kind of what that angle looks like. So that's that. And then... Here is the first piece off of my lamp bender mold. It sits perfectly flat. And here is the second piece. Same thing, F sits very flat. So in terms of eyeballing it, I think I did a darn good job. So I, I like these, I think they're fun. I think, you know, somebody putting this on their mantle or, um, you know, otherwise displaying it, it's just, uh, it's almost, it's not 360, but it's like 180 flowers and something to look at. It's the kind of piece that you're going to see something new every time you study it. And so uh, very pleased with these. So for this piece, I just glued it directly to the glass that was in the frame. And then uh, because it didn't fit the frame perfectly, I put a little piece of scrapbook paper behind it that I thought complemented the colors quite nicely. Same on this one. The IKEA frame actually didn't even come with glass. So I have some scrap float glass. I cut a piece of float glass, glued this to it, and then put a piece of scrapbook paper behind there. This piece is great. I love these single layer pieces that bend and stand on their own. It's a great way to use glass. Same with this scrap piece that I made, stands on its own, easy, easy display. These curved pieces, this you know was a great way to use the bullseye rolled edge and put it over the lamp bender mold. Had a lot of fun with that. And of course the flowers uh, are really the, the selling point, a feature of, of these pieces. Hey, I hope you learned a lot. And if you haven't already, please go follow me on Facebook. Just type in tinyurl.com slash FB We're having a lot of fun over there. Catch you later. Bye-bye.